Okay. All right, it's 82 degrees. 82 Fahrenheit. 82 Fahrenheit. The thing is that that doesn't mean that every air molecule has the same speed, right? Temperature is a distribution of speeds. So if here I make a graph, this is the number of molecules, and this is how fast they're going, speed of the molecule. Speed of the molecule. So the air molecules here in this room, we have one measure, at least back there, by that particular thermostat, by that temperature gauge, it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I could convert the speed of the molecule to a temperature, I have a convenient number, another formula for that energy, I have U equal one-half mv squared for kinetic, mgh for potential, and the last one for the day is three-halves k times t, where t is the temperature. It can't be the Fahrenheit temperature. What's the temperature outside right now? Close. Zero. Zero. Oh, man, I put zero in that formula. Huh, what does that give me? Uh, there's no energy. This can't be Fahrenheit. This has to be absolute temperature, vodka temperature. No, OK. Absolute temperature. In absolute temperature, zero really means no energy. At absolute zero, molecules do not move. Everything's dead, all right? Everything just sits there. No molecular motion. At absolute zero, this graph would look like a straight line here at zero. So we unfortunately are not uh, saddled with uh, the absolute temperature scale, right? We have the Fahrenheit scale because of Dr. Fahrenheit, a German scientist. Now, whenever I go to Europe, and I do quite a bit for research stuff, I was there in early Germ in Germany, actually, in January. And I'm trying to explain to people how cold it was back here. I left here on that horrible, horrible, tried to, on that day of January 6th, right, when we had wind chills at 40 below zero. And Europeans know nothing of Fahrenheit, even though it was a German that invented it. So I have to convert to Celsius. So we've got three temperature scales. We're going to have Fahrenheit, the thing you're near and dear to your heart if you were born here in America. We have Celsius, Celsius, otherwise known as centigrade. All right. And we have absolute. Now, The centigrade scale is set that it's 100 degrees when the water boils and when water freezes, it's zero. Makes sense. Simple. Most of the world uses that. In Fahrenheit, water boils at 212 and freezes at 32. And you might say, gosh, that doesn't make any sense. Why would Mr. Dr. Fahrenheit pick 212 and 32? He didn't pick 212 and 32. He, like any other good scientist, picked 100 and zero, but not for when water would boil or freeze, but rather 
100 is the temperature of the human body. Now you know he missed by a percent, right? It's actually 98.6, but back then that was 100. So 100, I mean, it was, it, they didn't know. They thought you know, maybe everyone had a fever in the, you know, 15, 6, 1700s or something, right? So 100 is actually body temperature. I'm going to put approximately body temperature is equal to 100. And there's also special significance for zero. Who knows? Do you really know? Seawater sea freezes very, very close. Not quite. Very close. Anyone ever make homemade ice cream? Raise your hand. Okay. All right, so what do you put? How do you, what do you do to make the ice cream freeze? Salt, salt and ice. You put salt with the ice. We recognize that. Have you walked around campus? You see salt on the ice? Did you notice today that the salt on the ice does no good? Zero degrees Fahrenheit is the coldest temperature which a supersaturated salt solution will be a liquid. I throw salt on ice, it will melt the ice until it gets to zero. Your ice cream, you put salt with the ice, it lowers the temperature of the ice. It won't lower it any more than zero, it'll be a frozen mess, but it will lower it below 32 so that the milk congeals nicely in the ice cream. So, a supersaturated salt solution, salt and ice, right? So salt, and so it isn't quite the sea freezing because the sea is only 3% salt, and a supersaturated salt solution is like 20% salt, right? So it isn't exactly seawater freezing. It's a little colder than that. Salt and ice can get you to zero. That's great if you're making ice cream, or the opposite is true. It's great if you want to keep the pavement liquid as opposed to ice, right? So Fahrenheit was not an idiot. He had a reason for 0 and 100, and the U.S. is stuck with that scale. Um, approximately 100 and 0. Now, notice there are 180 units here, right? And there's 100 units here. Describing weather gives you more variety in numbers, right? Because we have a larger, you know, oh, it's a degree warmer today, right? In Celsius, that would be 1.8. It it's a bigger unit. So, you know, we have more fun talking about weather because we get to go below zero and we get to go real high and we get this long range of numbers. And anyway, okay. <clears throat> it turns out that if you do the math, minus 40 centigrade equals minus 40 Fahrenheit. So when I was explaining to my European colleagues that the wind chill was at minus 40, I didn't have to say centigrade or Fahrenheit. And that's the first time I ever got to actually use that little fact of knowledge. That was so fun. Uh, absolute zero. Uh, this number is 273, and this is 373. And that's because absolute zero is here. Absolute zero, where all molecular motion stops, and that's minus 273. So the absolute scale, this is still 100 units, is the same size as the Celsius degree. They just offset it such that zero is where there is no molecular motion. And that number here is minus 450 something. Or minus 459. Uh, that's absolute zero in Fahrenheit. That's pretty darn cold. 